so how, how are you doing? Like, how are things, um, whereabouts are you? Are you in St. Catharines still? Whereabouts are you? Yeah, well, I mean, right now we're just like dri- driving right now, uh, visiting some family. But um, yeah, we're, we're normally in St. Catharines, yeah. Okay, well, right on, right on. And I mean, like, I guess, like, um, how did, like, COVID affect everything at the beginning? Were you kind of worried? Because, I mean, you know, you've been pretty much in that region for the entire time, and everything's pretty much been in lockdown since day one. Yeah, you know, the uh, COVID situation around my place sucks. Uh, the gym's all locked down and all that, but uh, luckily we're making it work. We're uh, we're getting in there, and we've got a small group that we're able to work with. Uh, like, I'm fortunate that uh, I'm dating my coach, so I get that one-on-one attention a lot, which which is nice. Um, but, yeah, it's a struggle with getting training partners, but I we make it up a bit. Well, that's good. And I know, like, they, they mentioned, like, I think pro athletes could train, but it still doesn't make it easy when you train and then you're still in the same boat as everyone else. Yeah, like, even though pro athletes can train, and so we, we are able to go in and out of the gym, but the gym still gets complaints from all the other people that see, see people going in. They don't know that we're pro athletes. And so, like, bylaws coming down all the time. And yeah. it, it just – it, it – affects the the training um but yeah you know but just making it work you know and it, it must be kind of frustrating you just have those distractions you're trying to train and you have people coming in and out and yeah yeah, yeah it sucks but what are you gonna do Exactly. But um so just moving on, I mean, so you made your amateur career in um in two, two, 2017, I believe. Um so I guess like I know the story, but for the fans they might not know. So how what like facilitated your decision to get into MMA in the first place? So I uh went on a trip like with he's my head coach now, it was like just when we first started like dating. Um and uh, he was going to to help Jason Sago with uh, a camp, getting ready for a fight in the UFC. And then I was just watching, and I'm like, oh, this looks actually very fun. And so I'm like, oh, guys, can I come? Like, can I just do something? And they were sparring. I'm like, can I spar? And they're like, you're not just going straight into sparring from doing nothing at all. And um, so then after practice, Jason did the moving around with me. Got a little bit of natural ability. You, uh, you do some training, you could actually make a run at this. And then so I that was like kind of how the, the spark kind of started. And then um, I, I went back and then I just started like training more. And it wasn't until I actually went to the UFC event. It was like the UFC Ottawa card. And then I saw like how hype it was and everything. And then that's when I like really kind of caught the bug. And uh, as with like, one, of my, one of my girlfriends, and I'm like, you know, I think I'm going to make a run at this. And, like, at this point, I, I hardly train. So she's like, yeah, okay, you you get into the UFC, I'll get your face tattooed on my ass. And then so the next day, I was like, yo, Kylie, like, hey, if I if I get in, you'll still get that tattoo. And she's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And now it's just, like, gotten to the point where she's, like, accepted that she's going to have to get a tattoo on me. <laughs> Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> That's quite the story. They're a little bit different than uh, some other fighters that have told me, but everyone has their own uh, has their own uh, upbringing for sure. Um, so, like, you know, you make your pre- pro debut. Um, did you have any nerves going into your pro debut? And if you did, how did you combat those nerves? Yeah, I was super nervous. At, 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 before every fight, I'm, I'm very nervous. I, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, I'm you know, I live for this, and it's uh, I I can just go in there with all the nerves. No, I'm scared of that. Like, but I I've gotten to the point where I can understand my nerves, and I understand that it's part of the process. It's like uh, like how Customano said, like you know, you use that fear to fuel, and uh, so that's that's what I do. I I do have the nerves, and my very first fight, I I remember like. My legs were like almost like jelly and everything, but you just 
you, you take one step at a time and you keep you know, going forward. And once you get into the cage, then the the nerves like they subside, and then then it's actually fun. Yeah, and, and another fighter I talked to just last week, she talked about, we talked about, like, get, you know, nerves, and she, she talked about her debut, and she's kind of in the same boat you are. Like, she has about the same amount of fights. And she talked about how, yeah, like, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, like, um, but once I get, once I start walking up to the cage, it all kind of just dissolves. And um, I think that's important because you want to be nervous. I mean, that means that, you know, you're, you're ready. If you're not nervous, there's probably something wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, it, it's it's interesting how your mindset can quickly change when you get when you actually breach the cage or when you're walking down to the cage for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, and the the more and more you do it, the the more you understand your and can uh, use them in a more of a positive way. Mm -hmm, for sure. Now, looking at your record, you've had uh, quite an amount of like quicker finishes in the first, second round. Um, so looking at that, obviously, you know, getting the finishes is the objective. Um, but is that something that you always tend to look for? Do you like the like dominating fights? How do you usually like to play your fights out if you if you have the choice? Yeah, I like to uh, I like to get a quick finish. I, I like finishing. Obviously, it's like the most satisfying to get a finish. Um, so I'm I'm always hunting for that finish for sure. Like you don't get paid by the hour and in there the, no. the, the chance you get knocked out you, but whatever happens there's always that chance and uh, so I'd like to mitigate that chance as much as I can and uh, so uh, if I can get a finish for 10 seconds I'm going for that I don't I don't want to stay in there and take that risk Mm -hmm. um, before I go any further, someone just put out a comment. They were mentioning that Niagara uh, MMA, I think, is making big moves. Can you can you concur with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I I'm I'm really happy with uh, everyone at the gym. I, everyone's super like we're we're all just there working hard and like just trying our best. And uh, I think that's why we're successful. We, you know, we're we're a smaller gym. Um, we're we're very like tight, uh, obviously because of the the COVID and all that shit. Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd be a lot, we would grow a lot bigger if we had the opportunity. But um, the group that we have is very dedicated, and uh, we've got like our sick coach, and the, we uh, we're we're like a family, and uh, we we support each other. Like whenever somebody's fighting, we're, everything's like all the focus is on on whoever's fighting, and. Uh, I think that's that's why we're successful right now. Okay. And before I go any further, I hope I'm not being too nosy, but whereabouts are you driving off to? Oh, just uh, to – it's uh, Mother's Day, so – and uh, Chris and uh, Chris's mother's birthday, and so we're going up to visit her in uh, Berkeley. Oh, nice. That's nice. That's good. That's good to hear. So you're not, like, driving, are you? No, no, he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just making sure you gotta got to be safe. <laughs> um but yeah just kind of moving on so in your career you've you've experienced like your first loss obviously that's always the hardest for sure but is it kind of bittersweet that the fact that you know you had this loss now and you've got to kind of take it as a learning curve versus having it come down later down the road yeah for sure i mean uh it's funny because you have a loss and i feel like you it, it forces you to really, like, look, look at things, like, deep down. And uh, if, if the sport is really right for you, and I, I feel like the loss kind of ha has made me, like, I guess not, not that this is my life because obviously I, I love it and everything, but it's like if I can get – that, that loss and like feel the, the emotions with it and everything like because a loss sucked it, I hated it and it just like hung over my head for so long but it really it really like fights it lights a fire under your ass to, uh, mm -hmm. to to like get better and and like know that I like I know for sure a hundred percent that this is what I want to do with my life there's no question anymore if I just like doing it because it was fun and because I was winning. It's like, I, 
experienced hell from that loss. It sucked, and now I now I've grown from it, and I I know for sure like that I'm gonna like do everything I can to never get lost again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I find like some people look at it as it's not so much you lose, you you learn in, in a sense. Yeah, exactly. And, and some people after, after that loss, they they come back and they're they're different. They, you can tell that that they've really, they've worked on their weaknesses. Oh, one hundred percent. Now that being said, obviously, then you came back, you bounced back with a with a great win, and now I mean you're getting a shot at the contender series. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. So um, that being said, so how did that all work out? Do you have to apply for that? Do they offer you something? Like, how does that uh, work out? Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. My, my manager, he's the one that uh, talks to, to the UFC. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly how it works, but he, he told me that, hey, It'll be on Dana White Contender Series, and uh, mm -hmm. so I jacked up when I heard that. So, I mean, that, that's what your manager does. That's his job, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he takes care of everything. Yeah, and I mean, looking at your opponent, Julia um, Postrat, I'm not even going to pronounce names. Um, you know, her last three wins have been pretty much finishes. I mean, it, does that kind of give you a good feeling for the fight? Does that, like, get you excited? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good matchup. Like, it, it's good for the fans, you know. But both mm -hmm. both of us look like we we're both trying to finish all the time. Uh, she's like the number one Brazil Brazilian outside of the UFC. So yeah. it's, uh, it's cool, like kind of like like the continent versus continent kind of thing. It's uh, north versus south kind of, kind of idea. Um, so I I think it's it's going to be a pretty sick sick fight. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess what are you? Uh, what are you and your team expecting from her? Um, I'm not really sure. Like the, I kind of let my team, my my coaches, they they watch her, all that kind of stuff, and then I, that, I just listen to them coaching me. Um, I don't really know what to expect. I I, I feel like I'm pretty well rounded everywhere, and uh, so wherever the fight goes. I, I'm happy. Okay, fair enough. And I mean, like, obviously, you, you signed the contract for the Contender Series. That being said, it's not until September. So, you know, you, you still have quite a few months uh, between there. Obviously, it would be a risky move, but are you able to have any other fights outside that contract, or, or do you have to uh, wait until you get that fight done? No, no, I, I'm locked in. You know, I, if I took another fight, I could get hurt or whatever. But no, that mm -hmm. it's just it's gonna be just from from now till then, just focus on the fight only. Okay. And with that being said, obviously, I know your manager uh, was taking care of all the negotiations, whatnot. Um, so, with it being so far away, uh, was that kind of the right move for for you, or was that is that something that you've been happy with, or would you rather have been a little bit closer? What What's your mindset on that? Yeah, uh, ideally it would have been closer, but I mean that's when it's going. So I, I'll take it, whatever. Okay, fair enough. And I mean, like, you know, I guess with that being said, you know, with Canada MMA, you know, I think there's, I guess, people would call it a reemergence with a lot of Canadian fighters like yourself. I mean, get people like TJ Laramie and. And um, I'm trying to think her name, Luby uh, Godinez, that just got into the UFC. Um, her fight in with LFA, Tristan Connolly, he just fought last weekend. And a lot of these prospects are coming out of Canada. Do you? How do you feel being a part of that that new era of Canadian fighters? I think it's really cool. I like, I like that Canada is like finally getting on the map for fighting. I, mm -hmm. I have a lot of talented fighters, and part of the reason why we haven't gotten as much exposure because you there's not so many fights in Canada and uh, so so it it's tough to to get like, you got to cross the border and all that kind of stuff and so it's I love that that Canada has like a name now <laughs> yeah yeah and, and that's it and I feel like Canada's just 
sort of slowly emerging into the MMA again. I mean, with the loss with GSP, Rory McDonald, once they kind of left, it was kind of put on hold for a little bit. We had some Canadian fighters that were really out there, and then they kind of retired or they're somewhere else now. And now it's we're starting to see this new young group of uh, fighters coming in and really taking over the map for Canada. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I, I feel like there's kind of like a group of us that all are, are coming in all at the same time, and it, it, it feels really nice. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like looking at obviously you living in Ontario. What was your thoughts when Ontario um, when they when they banned uh, amateur fighting? Yeah, that sucks. Like it's you know we, we already have a hard enough time getting fights and like you know getting mm-hmm. done to be able to fight in Canada and all that kind of stuff. And then now like no amateur. Like it it just it makes harder for anyone that's like coming up to try to get like, to break through or anything it, it just it just makes it so much harder it sucks but Mm-hmm. well and the problem is like a lot of fighters um that are from my hometown in chatham ontario like a lot of them had to fight like out in montreal because in ontario especially if they're doing a lot of the uh the amateur fights they, they can't fight here, and they have to go travel so far just to get an amateur fight. So a lot of times they're not even getting paid for it. It's crazy. Yeah, and that that's the thing is that with the amateur fighters, like, they're not getting paid. So anytime they travel, it's coming out of their own pocket. So if they have to, like, stay in the hotel or to fly or anything like that, it's just so much more of a struggle. Like, it, it they have to balance out. Like, is it worth it? Can I take the time off work? Like... It, it's tough for sure right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking at yourself, you know, you're going to be competing at, uh, at uh, 125 um, for the contender series. So I'm assuming you would be fighting for, you would still be fought, fighting at flyweight if you, if you do get into the UFC. Um, so looking at that division, I mean, how, how excited are you to see that division starting to open up so far just to get an amateur fight? So a lot of times they're not even getting paid for it. It's crazy. Yeah, and that that's the thing is that with the amateur fighters, like they're not getting paid. So anytime they travel, it's coming out of their own pocket. So if they have to like stay in the hotel or to fly or anything like that, it's just so much more of a struggle. Like it, it they have to balance out. Like, is it worth it? Can I take the time off work? Like, it it's tough for sure right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking at yourself, you know, you're going to be competing at, uh, at uh, 125 um, for the contender series. So I'm assuming you would be fighting for, you would still be fought, fighting at flyweight if you, if you do get into the UFC. Um, so looking at that division, I mean, how, how excited are you to see that division starting to open up so far just to get an amateur fight? So a lot of times they're not even getting paid for it. It's crazy. Yeah. And that, that's the thing is that, the amateur fighters, like, they're not getting paid. So anytime they travel, it's coming out of their own pocket. So if they have to, like, stay in the hotel or to fly or anything like that, it's just so much more of a struggle. Like, it, it, they have to balance out. Like, is it worth it? Can I take the time off work? Like, it, it's tough for sure right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking at yourself, you know, you're going to be competing at, uh, at uh, 125. Um, for the contender series, so I'm assuming you would be fighting for you would still be fought, fighting at flyweight if you if you do get into the UFC. Um, so looking at that division, I mean, how how excited are you to see that division starting to open up so far just to get an amateur fight? So a lot of times they're not even getting paid for it. It's crazy. Yeah, and that that's the thing is that with the amateur fighters, like they're not getting paid. So anytime they travel, it's coming out of their own pocket. So if they have to, like, stay in the hotel or to fly or anything like that, it's just so much more of a struggle. Like, it, it, they have to balance out. Like, is it worth it? Can I take the time off work? Like, it, it's tough for sure right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking at yourself, you know, you're going to be competing at, uh, at uh, 125. Um, for the contender series, so I'm assuming you would be fighting for you would still be fought, fighting at flyweight if you if you do get into the UFC. Um, 
So looking at that division, I mean, how how excited are you to see that division starting to open up so far just to get an amateur fight? So a lot of times they're not even getting paid for it. It's crazy. Yeah, and that that's the thing is that with the amateur fighters, like, they're not getting paid. So anytime they travel, it's coming out of their own pocket. So if they have to, like, stay in the hotel or to fly or anything like that, it's just so much more of a struggle. Like, it, it, they have to balance out, like, is it worth it? Can I take the time off work? It, like, it, it's tough for sure right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking at yourself, you know, you're going to be competing at, uh, at uh, 125 um, for the contender series. So I'm assuming you would be fighting for, you would still be fought, fighting at flyweight if you, if you do get into the UFC. Um, so looking at that division, I mean, how, how excited are you to see that division starting to open up so far just to get an amateur fight? So a lot of times they're not even getting paid for it. It's crazy. Oh, Peter Yan. Oh, Peter Yan, Yeah. And I, I, you know, it's interesting. I, when I was watching some of your clips, it, it does sound, seem like you have a bit of the same kind of style. And it, and it, I was going to add that in because I was watching. I'm thinking, what does she? Who does she remind me of? Like the way you fight. And I'm thinking, I just can't get it to my mind. So when you brought up uh, Pierre Yan, I was like, yeah, 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 okay, I could see that. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, yeah, definitely for sure. polished and everything, but. <laughs> It's the same idea. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, but again, that, I think that's it for, for today. I appreciate you, Jasmine, uh, for coming on here. I apologize about the next step. I will make sure next time I get you on here, I will have everything uh, working and ready to go. Um, so good luck with your, your fight in September. And, uh, and, you know, you're representing Canada here. So good luck. Thank you so much. It was awesome chatting. Thank you. Okay. See ya.